The raised bed system truly was a turning point in my gardening career. If I had stayed in the old row garden systems, I don't think I would have any hair left and I probably would not be able to stand up straight. Most of us were taught that the old row gardening system was the way that we had to garden. I'm here to tell you that grandma's old traditional style row garden system is not the one that we want to use now. We have graduated from the horse and buggy and now it's time to upgrade our system to something that works for our generation. So let's take a look at some examples of creating a raised bed garden. Basically, you have a permanent box that holds the soil, the microbes, and plants. Then you have paths that go around the beds for you to walk in. Because we have so little maintenance to the paths, we eliminate a lot of the garden work. There are several ways to construct a, a garden bed. So let me give you a few examples to get your mind thinking. The beds can be made out of several things. Composite decking material is a great alternative to wood. It is made from recycled plastic and sawdust. Composite decking is made from 95% recycled materials. 500 square feet of composite decking uses 140,000 recycled plastic bags. Wow, that's cool. Here's some pictures of my brother's garden. It is made out of composite decking. He uses stainless steel deck screws so they will last longer. Another thing these beds can be made out of is recycled plastic prefab beds. This raised bed garden is extremely durable and long lasting as well as environmentally friendly. Made from 100% HDPE recycled plastic which will not splinter, check, or crack even under extreme temperatures. This material is so stable and sturdy that these beds come with a 50 year limited warranty. These beds are easy to assemble and require no special tools. Once assembled, they require no maintenance as you will never need to sand, stain, paint, or waterproof the plastic boards. Another thing you can do is use large pots. I grew the trees and shrubs for my nursery in large plastic pots. Use the secret soil mix and be prepared to water more and add compost and organic fertilizer more. No tools are required and the costs vary based on the pot materials. I feel that pots are a good solution if you are limited in space. The two downsides to using pots are that there are wasted space between them if you are clustering them together and they tend to dry out the soil quickly. Additionally, you may be limited in your plant varieties because some plants do not grow well in pots. Another choice for raised beds is untreated lumber. And this is fine for a few years and then I find that the wood rots. If you make the garden out of treated wood, you will be exposing yourself to arsenic and other chemicals put in the wood to keep the bugs from eating it. So make sure the wood you use is untreated. The best material is redwood or cedar. You will need a power saw to cut the wood and screws to assemble it. So please note that railroad ties are not recommended because you can expose your food to chemicals and poisons. So my favorite building material is cinder blocks. I do all my intensive raised beds with cinder blocks. First off, I can build them by myself without any tools. I can stack them two blocks high and have a 16 inch bench to sit and garden. If I need to move my garden, it is possible to unstack them and move them to a new location. They also have a big bonus. Their holes can be filled with a soil mix and planted, giving you a little extra growing space. Cinder blocks are also great heat gatherers, so they extend your growing season. These blocks last forever. I have used mine for 27 years. Another material that you can use is dry stack retaining walls. This is a newer material to the gardening world, and it is fabulous for building a garden. It is also very attractive. Similar to the cinder blocks, that I use, it is durable and movable and requires no tools. The cost runs a little higher than plain cinder blocks and you do not get the extra space from the block holes. And last, if you are not able to build a garden, you can always use a child's hard-sided plastic wading pool. Although they only last a few years outside, these take minutes to install instead of hours, so you just need to cut a few holes in the bottom to allow the water to drain. All the intensive raised beds that I work with are constructed on top of the ground. You can build an intensive raised bed on any smooth surface. You can put it on top of your existing garden, 
on top of the lawn, on the driveway, even on top of the roof if you have enough support. You can be creative with your building materials when choosing what to make your beds out of, but consider the durability. You don't want to be rebuilding your beds in a few years just to save a few dollars now. Now that we have established a gardening structure, let's dive into the four principles of our intensive raised bed gardening system so you can understand the basis behind our method. The first principle of our gardening system is soil. We covered the soil in the second video. We learned that our plants and microbes thrive in sandy loam soil with lots of organic matter. And 99% of us know that this is not the soil that our homes came with. So instead of wasting our time trying to fix the soil in our yards, it is way easier just to start fresh with a proper soil mix. By using the proper soil, we now have eliminated most of the gardening problems such as weeds, poor production, infestations of bugs, and diseases. So principle number two is the microbes. This system relies on tried and true groundwork of all organic gardening. Feed the microbes so they take care of the plants. Microbes thrive in gardens that are in raised beds with the proper soil in them. The microbes will break down the compost and minerals that you give them, and the microbes love to grow in the garden beds that have not been compacted or tilled. So principle number three is organics. Stay organic all the time. There is never a time when you need any chemicals to grow nutrient-dense foods. Being organic protects your health and the health of the plants and the microbes. Principle number four, your planting style. The key to high productivity of the abundance gardening system is that it takes advantage of the entire surface of each bed to grow plants rather than leaving space between rows. The result is even more yield without adding more garden space. In addition to succession planting, we also will grow vertically. Vertical gardening uses the air space above the garden bed. Combined with the raised bed, the potential for dramatically increasing production with a vertical growing is enormous. Plants grown vertically can be planted close together and produce more in the rich, friable soil of a properly managed raised bed. Because each vertical plant uses only a few inches of soil surface, there remains a lot of room for low-growing vegetable plants. We also predetermine how much of each crop we want so we don't grow too much or have the entire crop ripen at once. Want access to more videos like this? Click the link in the description below this video to join the High Performance Garden community for free. Community members receive weekly high-performance garden video trainings, articles, and trade secrets delivered directly to your inbox. Do you know anyone else who is frustrated and struggling with their garden? Share this video so they can begin to transform their garden into a high-performance garden too. They'll thank you later. If you want to transform your garden into a high-performance garden in one season, you can enroll in the Abundance Garden course the only gardening course where you can garden step by step with your gardening coach. Click the link in the description below this video to learn more about the Abundance Garden course. If you have a topic you would like us to make a video about, please send us an email. Or if you have a gardening question, you can also email us at thelivingfarm@tds.net. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. May your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.